When it comes to creating a new series and a new world within that series, sometimes the minor or often overlooked detail of that series' world, having an actual traceable history to it, can make all the difference in that world's believability. Creators will often try to make it so that if people have questions on to why something is the way it is in their world, they can find a good answer within the series' own lore. And one of the best examples of this, I feel, is the evolving history of currency within the Fallout series of games. Fallout series is comprised of 7 to 8 games overall, with some of the entries having varying levels of canon. With the first chunk of the original content created by Black Isle Studios, but was later sold to Bethesda in 2007, who went on to fund the rest of the series, minus a return to form with Fallout New Vegas by Obsidian Studios. And over the course of the series, many different types of in-game currency became prominent in the world, all with their varying in-universe explanations and usages in the series for the most part. So I wanted to go through and talk about the evolving history of the Wasteland's own money, but before we discuss that, given the Fallout's connection to our own world's history, I think we should do a quick summary of money on its own. So money as a concept is as old, if not older, than written history. It's existed even longer before the coinage of rare metals, as money as we know it is an acting intermediary between two or more people, where all parties agree that it holds value. It was introduced in the trade and barter system, likely due to its longevity, as for for some goods, their lifespan wouldn't last long enough to trade with others for other goods, causing an imbalance in the goods and service market. Now, money as it was back then could be all sorts of things. All that mattered is that it lasted long, had agreed value, and you'd be comfortable trading for it. And thus the idea of money was introduced, and it would soon evolve around the world into something called commodity money, which is a resource that is both valuable on its own, either for its usage or its rarity, or holds its own value as a tradable good. This could be seen in food resources like spices or even alcohol, but would eventually end up going into the direction of more rare metals. Though over time, carrying around all that commodity money became more of a hassle, so we decided to create something called representative money, or currency with no intrinsic value, but more so backed by a commodity, usually acting as an intermediary between an intermediary, and this is best seen through things like the paper banknote. One of the most popular is the American dollar, which first started as backed by the gold standard, which means someone could go in at any time and exchange their paper money note for physical gold of equal value. But in 1971, the US moved away from this standard thanks to an executive decision by Tricky Dick Nixon, and soon, the money of the world would follow suit, and global currency became fiat currency, or money that only holds value because we say it does. Which leads us to the Fallout universe itself, as going off the assumption, since according to Fallout 2, Richard Nixon was president in the Fallout universe at some point, this means that the pre-war dollar bills were likely taken off the gold standard as well. Which in turn, when they entered the resource war of the universe, the dollar would begin to hyperinflate. Though the population wouldn't have to worry for long, as on October 23rd of 2077, the country Country, along with the economy, collapsed in thermonuclear fire, reducing the scraps of paper to no more than collector's items from a long-forgotten age, with only certain pre-war devices continuing to recognize them as valid currency. Though those who survived the tragedy and went on to rebuild and repopulate the waste would find themselves recreating the history of currency within their new post-war society. As within the caravans of the new California region in the United States, the trade settlement called The Hub would begin to accept a new form of representative of money, this being bottle caps, which were backed by water. This created the powerful Wasteland Water Standard. The Water Standard, much like the Gold Standard, is a trading system in which someone can exchange one bottle cap for one bottle of water. And the reason behind this decision was because the technology used to create bottle caps had been either lost or destroyed during the Great War, which not only limited counterfeit efforts, but made counterfeits very easy to spot. Along with this, since the creation of bottle caps is a long since lost technology, there is a limited number of them within the wasteland, which gave them scarcity value, and protected them somewhat against inflation to some degree. And soon this currency would catch on and spread throughout the entirety of the new Californian wasteland, becoming the dominant currency. And other regions of the US had similar ideas as well, with the Midwestern wasteland using ring pulls, which operated under the same logic as bottle caps, but used soda can tabs instead. Or in the Capital wasteland, which used bottle caps. 
for some reason. Even though it's not backed by anything strong like the water standard, it's just currency for the rarity sake. It feels like Bethesda doesn't understand why bottle caps were actually chosen as the main form of currency in the wasteland and just decided to use them because they thought they were cool. Anyways, these forms of money help stabilize the trade economy within the wasteland, and soon a similar evolution that we saw in our own history would occur. The organization known as the New California Republic would begin to gain control over the West Coast wasteland, and at the turn of the 22nd Second century, they introduced the NCR dollar, which were mostly made of coins minted in gold and paper bills backed by the same gold. This was the foundation of the US's next big representative currency, as around 2041 it had become the universal currency of the west coast, and fully replaced bottle caps. Fallout 2 even had a side quest poking fun at this, with the chosen one uncovering a hidden stash of 10,000 bottle caps which were all now worthless. Along with NCR dollars, we also had other factions creating their own personal currency as well. Though, unlike the NCR dollar, the Chicago pull rings, or the bottle caps, these were finite money, given value only because they existed, such as the Brotherhood of Steel's own Brotherhood scripts, which were currencies often traded in faction by members and didn't hold much value at all outside of the Brotherhood. But, due to their presence in Chicago, they are somewhat backed by the pull rings, which are backed by water. And then we saw the rise of the next big commodity money, which is the Legion Denariuses, which were were coins minted by Caesar's Legion from their supply of silver and gold, and can be valued by most caravans that are walking along the Caesar's Legion protected trade routes. So the coins themselves have value within caravans, but even outside of them they possess some sort of intrinsic value, based both on the fact that they are comprised of rare metals, but also in a pinch they can be successfully converted into ammunition, making them also a valuable defense option, so they are usable in multiple ways. And then we see even smaller factions creating their own money like the Morningstar Mine script found specifically in the town of Reading, which is backed by the Morningstar Mining Company and can be exchanged for $5 in NCR gold-backed currency. Likely due to the fact that the Morningstar Mining Company made a great supply of gold for the NCR, so much so that they would annex them later in their life. Though you might be wondering why gold has returned as a main standard for currency, as it has no real intrinsic value and the hub had already created a currency based on a finite resource like bottle caps, so gold's rarity doesn't seem to be a factor into it as well. And while yes, it is partly due to the finite supply of it, it also has to do with the fact that gold is the world's most reliable and durable electronic conductor, and is essential for computers and electronics. So in a world where technology is only as reliable as you make it, those who control the gold have the ability to control the future of technology itself. And this factor, plus the NCR's unstable growth, is likely one of the reasons that led to the NCR versus Brotherhood of Steel war. And during this war, the Brotherhood would target the gold reserves of the NCR, collapsing their economy and removing the gold from their grasp. These attacks would cause civilians in the NCR to rush to get their bills exchanged for gold so they would have something when the economy crashed, but the NCR could not meet these demands and people lost a lot of faith in the stability of the dollar, which in turn led the NCR to removing the bill from the gold standard and making it into a finite money like other factions' currencies. But that change would show weakness and cement the fragileness of their economy, and 40 years Years after it was replaced, the bottle cap returned in full force, backed again by the water standard. Though the NCR dollar did not vanish, it continued to exist, becoming a representative currency shackled onto the back of the cap, retaining only 40% of its original value. In short, a 100 NCR dollar bill would be worth 40 bottle caps, and it's here that the cap will reign supreme until another faction or company either creates a way to successfully recreate pre-war bottle caps and successfully burst the bottle cap bubble, or introduce a more stable and reliable currency like the NCR tried to do. But it'll be really hard to shake the bottle cap, as unlike other currencies presented by all these other factions, except for Chicago, the bottle cap remains a one-for-one -one standard. It is the perfect intermediary between both goods and services. And all bottle caps are the same. Nuka-Cola, Sunset Sarsaparilla, or even beer. All except for a black sheep of the series, Interplace Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, they introduced something called Balls Caps, which is a shameless product placement and is no longer canon in universe, but it was ridiculously overvalued. It was a bottle cap that was worth 100 normal caps, all thanks to some sort of shitty rarity because it was the only drink in Texas and it had fully replaced Nuka-Cola. And it's stuff like that that I'm glad that 
the series steered away from. The stability of the bottle cap is what makes it so strong. And it's things like this that make the Fallout universe feel so lived in when you play it. As there's ever-changing history within the series itself, down to things as small as the currency within the world. Which showed the developers cared deeply enough about the universe that they were creating to evolve even minor things within that universe, because that's how a living, breathing world works. Stagnation for iconography's sake only holds a series back, and not being willing to evolve the series beyond what is recognizable is bad for it. Though with that being said, evolution without direction can be just as bad. And the series' own evolving currency is a reflection of an actual designed path, with project director Josh Sawyer commenting on how the money was designed with a purpose to reflect the factions. And we can see this if we just look at the NCR. It's an attempt to return to form, to capture the spirit of pre-war society, as they not only return to the gold standard, which is the origin of the USD, but their whole organization is an attempt to rebirth the military-backed pre-war America, or on how Caesar's Legion's coinage doesn't rely on the backing of anything but the strength of its own faction and the coin itself, and how it can be repurposed into a tool of war, much like the might makes right ideals of the soldiers within the Legion. And this extends even to other factions' money, like the Brotherhood Scripts, which is a mostly privatized currency designed after the USD, but used only within the organization, with only slight exceptions, which is befitting of the Brotherhood's exclusatory nature and showing their pre-war influences. But unlike the NCR, the Brotherhood also had a footing in reality, accepting the grim nature that the old world can't come back. So they back their money on a reliable and necessary resource like water instead of gold like the old world. And with that all said and done, let's answer the most important economic question there is. How much for a Big Mac? So if we were to create the exchange rate of the hub, which is bottle cap for a bottle of water, going off the standard price of a bottle of water, a bottle cap comes to around $1.45 in value right now. And if you want to buy a McDonald's Big Mac, which averages out at about $3.99, then in the Fallout universe, this would cost you around 3 and 3 fourths a bottle cap per Big Mac. And if you ask me, that's a pretty fair deal. And with that answered, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been wanting to branch out to the Fallout series with Fallout-related content for a while now, and I found this small aspect of the world very interesting, so I decided to start here. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the world, you can do so by supporting me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash manynotthebadguy. Patreon is a very important tool for the channel and helps keep it afloat, so any little bit helps. And if you want to exchange your bottle caps for a new form of currency, well I hear copies of Shimonetta, a boring word where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist, this are going are they're they're gonna go hot soon so you can get that at buyshimanetta.com